cause of death was a single gunshot wound to the head. Did Christopher Dorner take his own life? Why was the cabin set on fire? And how was he able to hide in plain sight? New details on the end of that massive manhunt. Good evening, I'm Michelle Tuzzi. I'm Mark Brown. Eyewitness News reporter Leanne Souter is live at that burned out cabin with some major pieces of the puzzle now filled in by investigators. Leanne. Authorities say that they believe Christopher Dorner shot himself in the head inside the burned out cabin here, but an official determination has not yet been made. Now, authorities say that inside they also found numerous weapons, silencers and magazine rounds. Clear evidence, they say Dorner wasn't going to go down without a major firefight. Christopher Dorner's sniper rifle says it all, vengeance. This powerful weapon, along with other assault weapons and semi-automatic handguns similar to these, were all part of the cache of guns authorities say Dorner had armed himself with. Weapons he used to take aim at responding deputies as he barricaded himself in a mountain cabin. Before our deputies could finalize the plan, they were ambushed by Christopher Dorner. He began firing at them. Both our officers went down. Detective Jeremiah McKay was killed. Deputy Alex Collins wounded. Two more victims in Dorner's deadly revenge-fueled rampage. Authorities say the last life the former LAPD officer took was his own. The information that we have right now seems to indicate that the wound that uh, took Christopher Dorner's life was self-inflicted. Dorner's body was found in the basement of the burned-out cabin. Friday, the owners got their first look at the damage. We are victims in some way, but as victims go, we are we're not the worst off. Authorities say they did not intentionally set fire to the cabin and say they stand by their decision to use highly flammable pyrotechnic tear gas to try to flush Dorner out. The sheriff also defended his deputy's search of the area after Dorner's charred truck was found, even though it turned out Dorner was hiding in plain sight in a condo overlooking the sheriff's command post. If it was secure and there were no signs of forced entry, we were not going to kick the doors of several cabins or hundreds of cabins open during that search. Now, even though the manhunt for Dorner is now officially over, the sheriff says the investigation continues. Live in Barton Flats, Leanne Suter, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Leanne. In his manifesto, Christopher Dorner said he lost his job for being a whistleblower, and he said the review process he thought would vindicate him was rigged and got him fired instead. Tonight, we hear from an LAPD insider who says she and others can relate to what Dorner went through. Our colleague David Ono is here now with the exclusive story. Story. Michelle, Mark, this is an emotional interview with an LAPD veteran of 20 years who is still in the force. Her identity has been hidden, but she wants to be called Crystal. I talked to her hours before Christopher Dorner's final stand. She did the interview in an effort to reach out to Dorner. Crystal says although she does not condone his violent actions, she can relate to his frustrations with the LAPD. She, too, had a grievance with the department. She says she was treated unfairly and claims a number of officers feel the same way. I don't condone what he's done. It's appalling. But the, it could have been me. It could have been many other officers that's in this situation that he's in as we speak. And I just want him to know that there are officers out there that feel his pain. There is some truth. I could relate to a lot, a lot of what he stated in his manifesto. I have no knowledge of what he personally went through. I can relate by what I've went through. Speaking with other officers, I'm, I, they can relate. But but what's going on? We don't. I don't. I'm not saying I condone what he's doing by any means. But I could see how he fell off the cliff. I could totally see it. Totally. What you're saying is. A number of different officers could have snapped like this. Yes. Including yourself. Yes. And I'm a female. I'm a female. And to have to even think that that could have been me, it's just frightening. Cause <laughs> oh, God. What are you feeling? What? Just. <laughs> Just the pain, the frustration, the fear, just, <laughs> and innocent people have been hurt by a practice that's just continued through, through the, the department, and, <laughs> and it's just not right, it's just not right. 
Dorner wrote in his manifesto, the department has not changed since the Rampart and Rodney King days, and Crystal agrees. An important note here, the LAPD has reopened the case of Dorner's firing. And by the way, Crystal wrote a letter to Dorner. Now she would like to direct it to his mother and sister, and if you would like to read it, we posted it on our website, abc7.com. Michelle, Mark. Okay.